I don't care if you have to clear out every shelf in the store. I want you to get every kind of cereal, every kind of fruit, every kind of juice, cookies, ice cream, candy, anything you can think of. I can see you're determined to spoil her. There's nothing too good for my little girl. Nettie, I want her to feel at home here. So anything we can do to make her comfortable, we're going to do. OK? OK. I'm letting her sleep late this morning because Harley and I are taking her to the zoo later. Should I lay out suitable clothes for her? Um, actually, you know what? I bought her a new sweatshirt, so she'll need a pair of her jeans, uh, socks, shoes, Hi, uh, jacket. There's my princess! I dressed myself. <laughs> I can't see that. Since we're going out, I put on my prettiest things. Oh, sweetie, you, you look perfect, honey. You look just perfect. Uh, let me help you finish getting dressed. Uh, no, that's OK, Nettie. That's all right. I can take care of you. You can go. My hair is all snarly. It is? I can't well, honey, you're in luck because unsnarling snarly hair is daddy's expertise. Come here. Okay, snarls, everybody out. I was looking for you upstairs. You were. But I couldn't remember which room you live in. Well, honey, it's a big house. It's going to take you a little time to get used to it. I opened the door and saw Grandpa Allen. Oh, honey, that's definitely <laughs> the wrong door. Who is that lady in bed with him? Nobody you need to know. Okay. Do this, um, but it's time. Time? Time for what? It's time to get up. Alan. I was such in a deep sleep. Well, I'm amazed that you slept through all the rackets. <laughs> racket will racket. Well, Philip's daughter Lizzie was running up and down the hall. Uh, and uh, she even came in here one time and I gave her a look and she skedaddled. Alan, she's your granddaughter. Yeah, well, she's very sweet, very pretty, but she's extremely loud. Well, I didn't hear anything, and I think that is because I was dreaming, and I do believe I was dreaming about you. Oh, really? I love it when you dream well, about Well, I like me. it when you make love to me like you did last night. Oh, you were oh. wonderful. Well, now, does that mean that the answer is uh, to my question is yes? Hmm? Answer? Yeah. To what? The question I asked you last night. Are you going to have to refresh my memory? Question? Well, actually, it was uh, more than a question. It was a proposal. Oh, mm. oh, 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 oh. Mm. Well, I must say it's uh, not very flattering to know that one's proposal goes unremembered. Well, actually, I didn't think you were serious. I thought you were just proposing to me because you felt sorry for me. Sorry? Because Reva and Cassie threw me out in the cold on Thanksgiving. So you made it to Tulsa, okay. Ah, you gonna go to Oxbow's for dinner? For some ribs? Uh, oh, you know what you could do for me? Uh, bring me back one of those big jugs of sauce. I love that stuff. No, everything's pretty much the same here, except Shane conned me into staying home to play hooky today. And, well, he said it was a tummy ache, but uh, I think it was just too much Thanksgiving excitement. Me, I'm fine. I'm, I'm... I'm just a little nervous. Rick is bringing Abby home today, and I just want to make sure she knows how welcome she is here and how much we want her to be with us. I know Reva, and I know she's going to roll out the red carpet for you, but I'd rather you come home with me. She's going to make you do all the laundry, the dishes, everything. I have caused your family enough trouble already, OK? That is not true. You haven't done anything yes, like that. Yes, it is. I just, I... What? I have turned everybody's lives upside down. No. It's not true. Yes, it is. I don't understand why everybody is being so good to me. Honey, because everybody loves you. Miss Bloom? They come to take me back to jail. We're not policemen, miss. We're uh, security guards. Honey, Philip hired these men. Why? Just in case. Um... They're here to protect me? It's just as a precaution. That's it. I don't need, I don't need protecting. Abby, Roy's buddies are not going to stop with throwing a rock through a window. I mean, who knows what these guys are going to do next? After I killed their friend? No, honey, that's, that is not what I meant. It doesn't matter. All right, fine, we won't talk about it. I mean, it's done anyway. No, it is not done. 
I do not need people to watch over me. And if these men are staying here, I'm not going to stay here. I thought I heard voices. What's going on? Abby doesn't want the security officers here. I don't want to be any more trouble than I already have been. Hey, the last thing you are is trouble. And I think it's a good idea these security fellows are here. No, I just think it's wrong for me to disrupt people's lives anymore. Riva, do me a favor. Could you take her inside? Absolutely. Come on, sweetie. I'll fix your pot of tea. How's that sound? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Um, look, you can go ahead and, and leave, and I'll, I'll call you um, if I need you, but make sure you're available at a moment's notice, okay? No problem, Doc. Okay. Whatever you say. Thanks. Josh wanted to be here, but he had to go to Tulsa on business. I know. And Mara's at school, and Shane's upstairs faking a tummy ache. Little, little Dickens. You should go take care of him. No, no, no. And what, change channels for him? No, I'm going to stay right here with you. We all are. I want you to know that we're not going to think or even talk about anything that's going on outside of this house, OK? change the more they remain the same what are you trying to say mom well, you always drink your coffee first then you stir it and you always stir it counterclockwise <laughs> creature of habit is that what you're saying is that what you are i don't know maybe some habits are hard to break i am so glad you decided to come back with lizzie <sighs> me too you know until i see you in person i, I just forget how beautiful my little girl really <laughs> is I used to be a little girl, not anymore. No, you are my baby. You will always be my baby. And Lizzie will always be your baby. She's precious, oh. isn't she? <laughs> She's unbelievable. She's just adorable. And in you, you were just as adorable at that age. And it seems like yesterday. I'm afraid it was a few days before that, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when you were little like that, you used to tell me every single thing you did, every detail of your day. And now... Sometimes I feel a little left out. Left out of what? My life is one big non-event these days. Oh, I believe that. The highlight of my day is a trip to the supermarket. Oh, Beth, what, what about that man you were dating in Phoenix, sir? <sighs> wrong guy in the wrong place at the wrong time. And there's nobody else? Hmm. Well, let's see. The tailor at the dry cleaners flirts with me. <laughs> But he's 75 and has grandchildren. Oh, you should give him my number. Oh. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> I hope not. Oh, I hope not. Mm. Thank you. These are so good. Mm. Thank you. Did you see that? He gave you the eye. <laughs> he always does, because I give him a big tip, oh. I'm sure. I think he's looking for a little <laughs> bit more than that. Is that why you came back to Springfield? To try to snare a waiter? No, no, no. I mean, you did change your mind at the last minute, right? I just decided that she's too young to travel alone. OK. You don't believe me? Well, I thought it might have something to do with my telling you that Philip was seeing Harley. I came for Lizzie, Mom. Beth, the other night at the diner, I, I overheard you telling Philip that you were going to stay for Christmas and that I'd pushed you into it. And um, I hadn't pushed you into anything, honey. No, but... And we hadn't even discussed Christmas. I know. So what was that all about? I know you so well, Mom. And when you looked at Lizzie, I saw this look in your eyes. And I knew that the best present that I could give you was us. Your daughter and granddaughter home for the holidays. Oh, you're absolutely right. <laughs> it is the best present on earth you could give me. Sweetie, since it's just you and me, and since we love to be honest with each other, will you tell me the truth about something? Do you want Philip back? How am I doing? I'm sorry, sweet. Did I hurt you? Well, if you held my hair in one hand and brushed it with the other, it wouldn't pull. I did hurt you, didn't I? A little. I'm sorry, sweetie. It's okay. No, it's not okay, sweetie. You have beautiful hair, and Daddy doesn't want to hurt a single strand of it. I have to wear my hair down today. 
because I forgot my scrunchie. Your what? Scrunchie. I don't think I know what that is. You don't know what a scrunchie is? No, but I think I know somebody who does. Diner. Scrunchie. Fill up. Got any idea what a scrunchie is? <laughs> you don't? Never heard the word before in my life. Get out! No, oh, obviously you are acquainted with whatever this is. I've got a whole drawer full of them. Have I ever seen your scrunchie? <laughs> Only when I've got my hair in a ponytail. I use them when I work out. Oh, okay. Um, you think you could bring a couple over? I hope these are for Lizzie. And I hope she doesn't mind that they're for me. Would you stop with that? She's crazy about you. I don't think so. Philip, it's a classic other woman syndrome. I'm an outsider to her. Hey, I love you. She is going to love you. You trust me on this. Especially after today. She is so excited about the three of us going to the zoo. Oh, the monkey shirt we bought her. Is she wearing it? Uh, <laughs> uh, Lizzie has a little different notion about what she wanted to wear today. What do you mean? Um, unless dress to impress was sort of the idea she was going with, I think. Um, you'll, you'll see when you get here. Uh, but hurry, because we're almost ready. Okay? Uh, and, and don't forget the, um, uh, whatever they're, what you call it. Scrunchies. Yeah. And I'll bring one for you, too. Good morning. Hey. Brother? You were sleeping in late today. I told Lainey I'd hold down the fort until she came back from the store, so. You're such a good husband, Frank. Yes, I am. <laughs> Listen, uh, you got a couple minutes uh, for your big brother here, or are you going to be late for work? No, no, I'm taking the day off. What do you want to talk about? Oh, nothing in particular. I mean, it's just... Well, with Dad and everything, and Thanksgiving, and all well, your work and my work and all that, I mean, I... I miss you. I mean, I, I haven't talked to you in weeks, and I just want to make sure that everything's okay with you. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, everything is fine. Fine. There's no problems. Hmm. I don't think so. And you think I proposed to you because I felt sorry for you? Ellen, you found me on Reva's doorstep, and I was devastated and crying while the Lewises were inside, thanking God for all their blessings. What does that have to do with our, with our proposal? Everything. I mean... Everything. Listen, you saw how hurt I was, and you made this grand gesture to try to pull me out of it. This was but no gesture, right? I think it was very sweet what you the did. The last thing in the world that I am is sweet. Okay, then. whatever you're being, whatever it is, mm -hmm. I'm not going to hold you to the proposal. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. I thought you knew me better than that. And you know me better than anyone, Alan. That's the point. What point? You always know what to say and what to do to make me feel better. Mm. I love that about you. But I didn't take that proposal seriously because I didn't think you meant it. I didn't even think about it mm. again. So you thought I was just trying to cheer you up, is that it? Last night, all I wanted to do was see Tammy. One more time. You know how I am aching to have a family of my own. And you said all those wonderful things about wanting to give me a family because you knew how much I was hurting. Annie. You thought my proposal to you was out of pity that I was offering you a, a mercy marriage? Annie, I will tell you the things that I told you last night again and again and again until they finally sink in to, to that beautiful face of yours, huh? I can give you the things that you want, the family, the love, a life of comfort that you have never had before. If you will be my wife. You really mean it, huh? I've never been more sincere in my life. But... Uh, but what? But what? Tell me. Uh, hmm? Alan, I can't. I can't be your wife. 
we need anything else for you before we go. Uh. I wonder if that jacket's going to be warm enough for you. You know what? Maybe you should run upstairs and get a sweater, just in case. If you come with me, I might have a hard time picking out the right room. <laughs> there are so many. I know. There are a bunch of them, aren't there, sweetie? I even had a dream about them. You did? Was it a bad dream? Not bad, just not good. No, sweetie, I'm sorry. Well, you're going to get used to it. Because this is your home, too, you know. Ah, oh, home sweet mansion. Ah. Oh. Well, what a sweet tableau. Hello, hello. How is my lovely little niece? Recovering from all that pumpkin pie? You remember your evil Aunt Amanda, don't you? I didn't have any pumpkin pie. Well, I did. I bet. This was a prey ski, of course. Roger and I shushed every slope in Colorado. I even stayed a few days by myself while he came back to take care of business. Wow. Sounds like a fabulous time. Oh, it was glorious. You didn't happen to leave old Raj out there, did you? No. So, Lizzie, you must be looking forward to getting back home, huh? I know you're going to miss your daddy, but there is an old saying that goes, there's no place like home. When's she leaving? She isn't. She's staying through Christmas. <laughs> well, isn't that a lovely holiday surprise? It certainly is. It's going to be the best Christmas ever, right, sweetie? Right, Daddy. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I'd love to stay and chat, but my holiday is over. Finny, it's back to work for me. Where's your father? Hmm. Oh, Grandpa Allen? That's right, sweetheart. You seen him? Um, he's upstairs. He's with the lady. Oh. And was she blonde? And was she riding on a broomstick? Ellen, every time that I am feeling low and down, you are there for me. Every single time. You were there for me at the hospital. You were there for me in court. And again, you were there for me on Thanksgiving. Randy, where are you going with all this? All I'm saying is it's really wonderful that you want to be my knight in shining armor. Mm. But Marriage is about give and take. Are you waiting for me to dispute that? Let me finish, okay? And you well, sure, take all the time you want, Annie, but as long as I have my say, okay, all right? I'll sit, sit down, down and listen. Yes. I am not sure that right now I can, you know, give you what you need. Annie, you do. Now, why don't you understand that? What why don't you get What do that? I give you? Alan, come on, wake up. You can have any woman that you want. You know, maybe, Annie, it would be better if I told you what my life was like before you came into it. So why don't you sit down, huh? Before you came into my life, Annie, I didn't think that there was a woman alive that could ever excite me again. A woman that could be more than my equal. But not one day goes by that you don't surprise me, intrigue me, anger me, frustrate me, and fill my life with joy. You know, when you walk, when you walk into a room, the blood starts filling and racing through my veins. No two days or two hours with you are alike. I mean, sometimes you're like some wild animal, and then in a blink of an eye, you can be, you can be as vulnerable as a little child. And that's what you love about me? Yes, Annie, that's what I love. Because you've brought something back into my life that, I, that I've lost. You've brought back spontaneity and passion. You've brought that back into my life. You've brought fire. You've made me feel more powerful than I've ever felt before. I, you, I feel like I can do anything, accomplish anything. And you've brought that back to me, and that's why I want you I want you to be my wife. You really mean it, don't you? I have been more sincere in my life. Yes, that's why I want you to marry me, Annie. I 
I'll be your wife. You will, huh? Yeah. Uh, contingent, contingent, Ellen, on one item that we need to clear up first. What, what, one item? What? Um, hoping that your proposal was serious, I just, uh, I jotted down a few ideas that I had on this particular merger. I feel that you are wasting your time trying to make me feel better, because I can't. I have killed a man, and everything has changed since then. And no matter how you try to justify it or try to talk to me, it doesn't matter because Roy Meacham is dead and I am responsible for it. Abby, listen to me. You cannot spend the rest of your life crucifying yourself for something you were driven to do. Please, let's help you, sweetie. What's wrong? Um, nothing. I'm really fine. I think, um, I should just go upstairs and take a nap, okay? Your room's all ready for you. Great. I'll take this upstairs for you, okay? Thank you. Do you think I could, um, get a glass of water? Of course you can. Thanks. I'll get it for you. Okay. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm really... I am. Philip Franks, so stop looking at me like that. Looking at you like what? Like you don't believe me. Philip is kind and he's warm and he's caring and he's very funny and he's very good to me. He's really terrific. Well, he better be because I know you and when you take a fall, I fall hard. You I know. Betcha. So yeah. sue me. Well, you know, I don't think enough time has gone by. What are you saying? That you think this is a rebound from Mallet? Cross my mind. Yeah, well, uncross it, because that's not what's happening here. I just think Philip's ex-wife showing up here for Thanksgiving was no accident. Of course it was no accident, Frank. What are you saying? Maybe she's sending you a message. Would you stop being so cryptic and just tell me what you're thinking? Okay, fine. Philip and Beth have been known as a couple in this town as long as anyone can remember. Yeah, well, things change. I think you and I both have learned that the hard way, so why don't you quit worrying about it? Beth brought Lizzie here for Thanksgiving, and she's spending some time with Lillian. For how long? You know what? I'm not one of your callers. This is an interrogation room, and I don't have to answer that well, question. Well, just, just take it easy, sis, okay? Don't be so defensive. You know why I'm being so defensive, Frank. Of course I'm not thrilled that Beth is here. I know how long they were a couple. What am I supposed to do? All I can do is be me and believe what Philip is telling me. You've become so cynical since you became a cop. I hate that. Well, maybe a little. And not that it's any of your business, but Beth is staying through Christmas, and then she's going home. And, for the record, when Beth showed up here, Philip made a point of showing her that we are a couple now, and she seemed fine with that. And if she is, why can't you be? Because I'm not sure you believe any word that's coming out of your own mouth. You're wrong, Mom. I didn't come for Philip. I came for you and Lizzie, and I am staying for you and Lizzie. All right? I guess I should have asked you before I decided to extend my visit. Oh, for heaven's sake, you can extend your visit forever, as far as I'm concerned. But if you did want Philip back, you'd certainly get no argument from me. I mean, you've been the great loves of each other's lives forever. And you know how I felt when you started those divorce proceedings. You told me that I should wait before I did something I couldn't take back. 
That's right. You were dying to say I told you so, weren't you? Oh, no, I'm not, honey. I just think you should know that this thing with Harley and Philip is more than a fling. You know, after the divorce, he was just so lonely and he was so withdrawn. It was so sad for such a long time. But now he and Harley seem to have these feelings for each other. I know, and, and I'm glad for Philip. But I am a little wary of all this. And that is part of the reason I'm staying. If it's true, and Harley is going to be a part of my daughter's life, I want to be sure of her feelings for Lizzie. No, I think that's a good idea, yes, of course. But especially because Philip does seem to be very serious about I heard her. you the first time, Mom. I'm sorry. I know it's a serious relationship, OK? But this is about Lizzie. It is not about Philip and Harley Cooper. Philip made it very clear that he's moved on. Fine. So have I. And now, I've got to go. Oh, sweetie, don't go. I, I want to keep chatting with you, please. Uh, Where are you going? Got errands. Wait, you, you want what? Alan, if I'm to be the next and last Mrs. Alan Spaulding, then I want my share of the family business. You know, Annie, if you were so unsure of the sincerity of my proposal, why were you up half the night making a list of conditions? Because huh? I just wanted to be prepared. You taught me that, and I'm not asking for that much. Annie, you're already CEO of Ally. Yeah, but that's just a little dummy corporation. I deserve more than that. But you have an enormous amount of uh, uh, Lewis Oil stock. I don't care um, about Lewis. I want Spalding. I want a uh, piece of the Spalding pie. Mm, I understand you want something of your own, Annie, and I'm going to get it for you. Like what? Mm. What was the name of that perfume you were telling me? What did you call simply, it? Simply Annie, yeah. but that was just a childhood dream of oh, mine. Oh, no, but it doesn't have to be a childhood dream. I, I like the idea. I like the sound of it. Simply Annie. It sounds like a hit to me. Mm. I think the deal is done. We'll start production as soon as it's feasible. How about that? That's huh? very nice, mm. Ellen. That's very sweet. But mm. I had in mind something a little bit more substantial. I want to be a major player in all the areas of the family business. Tell me I didn't hear what I just thought I heard. Congratulate us, Amanda. Ellen and I are tying the knot. You're going to be the next Mrs. Ellen Spaulding. You're not serious. Terribly, wonderfully serious, Amanda. No, the whole idea is preposterous. Oh. Well, it's going to happen, Amanda, and we could not be happy. It is going to be the wedding of the year. The century. Oh. Why? Who's going to show up? You don't have any friends. You'll have to hire actors to impersonate your guests. Amanda. Ellen, Ellen, Ellen. Amanda, if you think your cheap little insults are going to wound me, then you're mistaken. Insults, honey, I'm stating the facts. You are just jealous. What? Because you and Roger haven't gotten close to going down that aisle for, like, months now. I think I'd better speak to you in private for a minute. You know, Amanda, Annie and I are going to get married whether you like it or not. Now, you have two choices. You can either be happy for us or you can go straight to hell. Dr. Garcia was supposed to cover for me. That's the point. What time do you go into surgery? Uh, I'll, I'll be right there. It's an emergency. It's okay. You go. She's probably going to sleep for the next couple of hours, and when she wakes up, I'll be right here. Do not leave her alone for a second. I won't. I'll be right back. It shouldn't take too long, okay? Drive safely. Okay. Shane, I'm running down the basement for just a minute. I'll be right back. Huh. 
I knew she likes you. Wasn't it great that we all got to spend Thanksgiving together? Yeah. Are we gonna see Mommy today? I'm not sure, sweetie. I think our day is pretty full. Um, but you, you know what I was thinking we would do later, if it's okay with Harley, and if you want to do it, we can go visit Harley's dog, Scout. Would you like that? Yeah. But if I can't see Mommy, can I call her? Absolutely, sweetie. As soon as we get home, you can call her and you can tell her all about the day, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. And Harley should be here any second. I hope so. My hair's all messy. Oh, honey, it isn't. Your hair looks beautiful. Yeah. I know something else we can do while you're here. What? You want to hit the mall with Dad? <laughs> you want to hit the mall? Yeah. Go do some shopping? <laughs> and I'll buy you anything you want? How about that? Would you like that? Yeah. We'll go, we'll go. I'll go buy you anything you want. We'll load up the limo, clean out a few stores. Yeah. Sweetie, I love you so much. If I could, I would wrap up the whole world and give it to you. You're my precious little girl. Don't you ever, ever, ever forget that, okay? I won't. Okay. You know, when I have you here like this, I feel like it's Christmas every day. I love you too, Daddy. You're the best daddy in the whole world. Oh, sweetheart. <sighs> That's Harley! Come on in! Hi! Mommy! <laughs> okay, I'll call our Madrid office and let them know you'll be in touch. Buenas tardes to you too, Senor Molinas. Hey, there's my big fella. How you feeling? Better. Ah, 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 no more TV. How about a good book? I just bought you that one. I think it's in Abby's room, but don't disturb her because she's taking a nap. No, she's not. I was just up there to get the comic. She wasn't there. She has to be. If she is, she's invisible. Well, that can't be. Go check for yourself if you don't believe me. Thank you, Mommy. Okay. Did you brush your hair all by yourself? Daddy did it. He did? Is that so hard to believe? I'm just surprised you did such a good job. Men don't usually have the patience. Yeah. Breaking the mold, you know. <clears throat> I'm keeping you. Uh, no, is Harley supposed to be here any minute? So. Oh, well, I'll get out of your way. I just wanted to drop off. Lizzie's things. Yeah, that's great. I appreciate it. Hey, hey, hey. The picnic basket scorchy patrol is finally here. Oh, hello, Harley. Hey. Beth, hi. It's sweet of you to bring the scrunchies, but I already brought Lizzie her own. Oh, uh, of course. So, she won't be needing yours. Well, um, I don't need them. She can have them if she wants. Yeah, hey, never get too much of a good thing, right? <laughs> here, Lizzie, you can have them. Thank you, but my mommy brought my favorites. That's all I need. Uh, you know what? We better get going. Um, they've, got, they've got some baby giraffes out at the zoo, and it's, it's feeding time. Oh, well, I'll be going. I just wanted to make sure Lizzie was OK, and you are, aren't you, sweetie? Except for the bad dream. Oh, baby, you had a bad dream about what? Did something happen? No. Something must have upset her. No, it, it, I mean, certainly nothing that I know of. Oh. It must be sleeping in a strange bed in this strange house. Maybe you should stay with me. Uh, I've been waiting a long time to have her here with me. But if she's frightened... I'll take care of her. Why don't we ask Lizzie? Hmm. Honey, I know... It must be hard, sleeping in this big house all alone. She's not all alone. I'm here with her. What can we do to make it easier for you? Well, 
Could you stay with me? Could you? Please? That's up to your father. Please? Could she? Please, Daddy? I uh, hate to leave, Annie, but I'm needed at the office. Now, I'll get dressed and meet you downstairs, Amanda. Let's talk later. I have a, a lot of wonderful ideas. I can hardly wait to okay. hear them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Amanda, you might have had the good grace to at least pretend to be happy for us, huh? Bye, honey. Have a nice day. <laughs> oh, gee, you know, it's hard to picture you as the blushing bride, Annie, certainly in white. Oh, and please don't ask me to be your maid of honor. It would make me sick. I'll keep that in mind. But in the meantime, I have a newsflash for you, Amanda. Soon, very soon, I am going to be going into the office myself after the most lavish, most elegant wedding in Springfield history. And I will be taking my place in the Spalding home and the Spalding business. <laughs> okay, I'll see your news flash and raise you this little hot item, Annie. I may not be able to keep Alan from marrying you, but I can sure as hell keep you out of my family business. Oh, I can hardly wait to put that to the test. But as Mrs. Alan Spaulding, I'm going to be involved in every aspect of Spaulding Enterprise. I am going to be there for all the main decisions. Over my dead body. That can be arranged. I looked everywhere. How could this have she happened? Took her coat she must have left. I went into the basement for a minute. It, it must have given Abby time to slip out. Well, you, you told me she was asleep. I thought she was. Shane went into her room and she wasn't there. I should have never left her. I should have never let those security guards go. Well, it's great. There's no point in guessing everything. We just got to figure out where she could have gone and go find her. She's just so shaky right now. Anything could happen. into my life. And I use them to end yours. I didn't mean to. I was very frightened. You told me you were going to kill me, and I believed you. I didn't... I was afraid that nothing could stop you. The night at Jesse's garage, couldn't stop you. And in the courtroom, the law couldn't stop you. I never meant for this to happen. And I'm sorry. I am so very sorry. You should be. You don't belong here. You here. You recognize me? I thought you might. I'm Roy's mother. 